Welcome to GWPOP.org and this is GW Popcast and this is Are You Ready to Talk? I am Mandy Dahl and our guest today is Byron McMacken of Pennywise, very famous punk band in case you haven't heard of that, I'm sure you have. Uh, Byron, so did you grow up here in, in the South Bay? Born and raised in the South Bay. Ah. Born and raised in the South, been here my whole life. So where exactly, which of which uh, the well, I was, uh, I know we're in Hermosa now. Yeah, um, I was uh, up in Redondo um, as a kid. Uh, kind of moved all over parts of Redondo and ended up here in Hermosa. Even though Hermosa my stomping grounds, it's like surfing, skateboarding, but ended up right up the street here for the past uh, over 20 years. Oh, great, yeah. great. So when you were a kid growing up here, what, what did you, I heard you just say, what, you were skateboarding and surfing? And yeah, we, uh, we were skate rats and beach rats, so... We spent the whole, I mean, luckily back then you could spend the whole day down at the beach and you were fine. So, um, yeah, we, we lived it. We were here all day, living on about $2.50 and <laughs> buying, you know, pizza boats and hot dogs from uh, Goodies Galore and hanging out at Jeffers Surfboards and, and cool. being on the sand. Nice. So when did you start drumming? Uh, I started drumming at 10 years old. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So did you know that was it, what you wanted to do, or? I mean, you know what, there was a drum set for sale, um, I wanted to get it, I couldn't get it, I couldn't afford it, my mom wouldn't get it for me, and a couple weeks later I worked a deal with a friend, and got it, it was a different drum set, it wasn't as nice or as big, but I got one. Got you started. Yeah, and it was all hell from there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, what was what was the first band you were in? Um, well, I wouldn't say necessarily bands, or but um, I did a lot of jamming with yeah. uh, some local musicians. Um, I mean, I used to play with this guy Rick Devo, uh, not Devo, Rick Miko, who is currently in the uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers uh, "Righteous and the Wicked" cover band. Oh, cool! He's in a band called Too Loose Forever. Amazing guitar player. They rehearsed right next door here at Total Axa at a. Uh, uh, music focus. Okay. And um, you know, just a lot of jamming with friends. Um, never really. Uh, and I was in school marching band, so I kind of nerded out for a while. And never really like a we could just call it a full fledged band. Um, like I said, a lot of a lot of jamming with friends, but nothing that uh, made it anywhere. And until uh, I ran into the uh, good old boys in Pennywise. Yeah. So how did that all come about? Um, that came about from one of my skate buddies. Um, used to be sponsored by Dennis Jarvis and Spider, and Fletcher hung out there a lot. And he used to—he was like a pretty good skater. Like they would always ask him to do tricks when he went to, uh, skated past 16th Street, their local hangout, and said uh, when they were looking for a, a drummer, that they threw my name in the hat, which was interesting. And it's been interesting ever since. Yeah, because you've been in the band consistently from the giddy go. Giddy yeah, up, from the yeah. beginning. Yeah, the first original drummer was Hank Jacobson. Um, and then uh, I got in the band, and here we are today. And when did when exactly did uh, Pennywise start up? Um, I got in like pretty much like the end of '87. Wow! I graduated '88. That's when we started. Um, pretty much playing local parties and stuff. So okay. I'd say pretty much from 89. there on '88, it was actually the the uh, start. Where you know it's where it's like we kind of were you know we were doing stuff. Right. You know? Right. Right. So your first album came out in 1989 or something? Um, well, we made like a little seven inch, which, uh, God, that was not even before 80, that thing was right, yeah, 88, um, maybe even a little bit before that. Um, okay. Yeah, we, we cut them, hand glued them all, and um, sold them all ourselves and did, it was all... So like, you guys started playing around here locally in, in South Bay, in yeah. Mr. Redondo. I mean, it was all backyard parties. Right. And, um... You know, we were, we we actually played I think a battle of bands at Mary Coast High School and we lost. Um, <laughs> and uh, and then we started you know venturing out and playing some Hollywood clubs and stuff and kind of just escalated from there. Right. And then what what was your first big tour? Uh, first big tour was actually in a van. Um, actually, I th if I'm mistaken, we may have gone to Europe before that tour. Anyhow, like we were in a van, all of us packed in one van, no trailer, and made our way across the entire coast, this coast to the east coast. Wow, yeah, wow. It was, like, it was wow. Uh, pretty extensive. That must have been several weeks. It was v several weeks. We went, I mean, we covered, like I said, from here to there. And uh, 
Now, did you have gigs booked, or did you just... No, we had gigs booked, but okay. um, it was, you know, like I said, um, you know, we were, you were we just... were pretty start, starting out, so a lot of small stuff, but um, um, it's what you do when you're in a band, you know, well, you, yeah, start up, of course. you start small. And, and when you got to New York, stars. where did you play? We played at CBGB's, actually. Woohoo! Yeah. At CBGB's, it was yes. super scary. Yeah, <laughs> I bet. But uh, that when was, was awesome. that? That was like that was in like 80s? 88, 89, something like wow. maybe 89. Um, right. Yeah, it was. It was totally freaky because um, it's a very sketchy place. Yes, I know. Um, even being out front is sketchy. And mm -hmm. uh, but we got to say we played it, and um, I mean, so it was historic. Yes, it's um, very historic. Yeah, it no longer exists. Well, I mean, I think they say it does. I'm not really yeah, sure if it does not or doesn't. As, not not the way no, nothing like nothing that. Nothing like it was. No, back no, no. Day. It's exactly what it looked like in the documentaries. Yeah. It was yeah. scary, <laughs> but yeah. it's fun. I mean, I fun. know it's it's a very fun and it was place. yeah, it's freezing out and snow and like I said, we were in a van. I mean, it was I don't know how we pulled it off. Um, <laughs> it was like you know four guys and we had one guy helping us and driving and it was uh, actually I think there was two guys helping us. And then I you mean, had to drive all the way back. We, I mean, we drove from here to Florida to oh, New York. Right. I mean, we did it's a lot. Yeah, yeah a lot I'll going say. on. So when you got back, you took a little break and. Um, I mean, God, I can't remember what. I mean, the stuff just started happening back yeah. then. So yeah. Um, you know, it's, uh, then, many years ago. So yeah, so nothing. then, when was your uh, first European, to, or what was your favorite year to room? biggest European tour that you can well we did a, a tour in Europe that was like um, a super another extensive tour where we were all just in one van and uh, we did like 38 days with only two oh days off gosh. or something oh wow, um, wow, wow yeah wow. it was uh, now you guys know what it's like to be on the road <laughs> it was definitely not glamorous at all we we're sleeping on the floor way to bring sleeping bags like you know um, it was playing in squats which were like you know um, Pretty. What were the cities that you played? I mean, we we covered did you go to Europe London? entirety. We, did you yes, go to London? we did. Yeah. And, and you were in Paris. And I don't believe we did Paris France? the first time, but I'm and so maybe not France, but I mean Germany. Pretty much everywhere else. Um, okay. But it was a, uh, it was pretty, you know, um, kind of you know railer at the least. So did you? Yeah. Then you got there was what was there was an album that got a lot of. Play. I think the uh, very, first really our first record, map, map, so to um, speak. Uh, Pennywise self-titled, and then Unknown Road pretty much put us on the map because um like uh, in the skateboard world was like just blowing up, um, and we went over there and we played and this is in London. No, all over oh. Europe. Like oh, everyone okay. went. They were like they were like who is this band? And like all the kids would show up and go crazy, and the promoters were like, who are you? Because they right. weren't skaters, but the kids knew us from skate videos. So, oh, okay. Uh, that's kind of that's how, how it started. Yeah. In, over there, at least. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you had that one big big, hit, uh, big album that came out that made it to really high on the charts. As far mm, as I mean, I'm not necessarily high on the charts, well, but it did I mean, well. It sold a lot of Yeah, it sold. You know, it was very and, popular. And, and, and it was also very popular in Australia. Yeah, yeah, we had uh, yeah, like, we had three, we two did. or three gold records over in Australia. That was all due to like the surf videos. Um, like if you didn't see now that the momentum generation is just documented on uh, on Taylor Steele and what made that whole generation. Um, it was super fun. That whole run through Europe the first time was more about like the hype was on the skateboard videos. So. Right, all the kids would show up to see the skateboard. Yeah, yeah because so. you guys they knew you from the skate. The yes, video. this is correct. So, like, you know, the, so you, know, you and Fletcher were both mad skaters, skateboarders. Uh, yeah, he 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 could skate a little bit. You know, um, I wouldn't say any of us were great, but um, we all love. Would you like to do it? Yeah, you're all. Good. I mean, that's back then. That's how you got to and from anywhere. You know, like, right. I mean, I covered. I mean, I went to Redondo High and lived over in uh, Blossom and Matthews, and I skated. Every, you know, that's right. over five miles. Like, right. so you just if skate. I wanted to go to the beach, that's how I got to the beach. You right. Know, like, well, it's really nice going downhill. <laughs> I mean, downhill with your surfboard is what stops you. So you yeah. just hold it out. It's like a like a wind sail. So. Right. <laughs> going up, yeah, it's not that. Fun. So you were surfing and skating. Uh, I mean, I was trying to surf. We'll say that. I mean, I never got really great at it, but um, that's what all my friends did. So yeah. you know, like we were just. Just be, that's what you do at the beach. You're beach right. kids. You're either on, you know, you skate to the beach and then you you go in the water and you surf and, and you skate home. You yeah. Know? So. Well, it was a pretty nice childhood to grow up here. I well, yeah, I can't complain. Pretty, 
pretty yeah. much a paradise. Still is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do as much skating or as much surfing, but right. I still, still, uh, so still now, enjoy. So now, where did you, you're married and have a family. I am. So where did you meet your wife? I met my wife. Um, and what is her name? Lori. Lori. Lori McMacken now. Right. I met her um, through actually some Supercross uh, friends. Cause, um, then I started transitioning into uh, riding dirt bikes and stuff and knew some people that like, um, we're into that too, and we kind of met, and then um, a few years later, here we are. So, cool. Lucky for me. Yeah, so you met her motor motorbiking. Well, just through different friends that did, oh, were involved parties. in motocross and stuff. Uh -huh. Yeah, not yeah, not that like not in surf or skate or anything. But, okay. Yeah. Okay, and you all live here in Hermosa Beach. Live. Yep, we do. This is the spot. This is. Yeah. And you have a child. I have a little son. So, well, not little anymore. Seven, just turned seven last week. Um, What's his name? Braxton McMacken. Braxton. And uh, yeah, he loves it here. And obviously, we're starting to learn. We're starting to get our skate on. We're you know slowly He's learning to skateboard as well. Yeah, we're going to the park and starting to learn how to get that going. And now he wants to ride dirt bikes. And I don't know if mom's going to let him do that, but <laughs> we'll see how um, that rolls. Right? Yeah. He's a little gun for that. It's not, it's not like for some reason, really not into surfing right now. We. We tried a little bit in Hawaii, but um, we'll get there. Well, he's only seven, so he, he has some time. Yeah, we'll get there. Time. Well, I also uh, think it's really important for everybody to know that uh, Byron is helping with our GW Pop event that's going to happen here on the beach. GW Pop, good world, good world power of peace. And we're going to be doing some talks on the beach and we're going to have some bands play and we hope that anyone that's local here would come out and that's going to be on Saturday, May 18th. And I really thank you for helping with that. And then to bring it all the way current up to date with Pennywise, you, you have, a, you have a, uh, a concert coming up here in uh, Ventura soon, don't you? Like we have, we do. That's on, uh, what is that, March 2nd. But before that, we're playing up in Big Bear. Oh, okay. On the uh, 28th and 1st. The 28th of February. First. Oh, February okay. 28th on the 1st of March. Then we jump down to Ventura. Where, where are you going to play in uh, Ventura? It's a place called The Cave. It's like that's a little, in Big Bear? Yeah, it's like a... It's called The Cave? Half. Yeah, oh, I guess it's pretty nice. nice. My brother's played there, my brother's band, but... And then two days after that, we jaunt over to uh, good old Australia again for okay. a couple big festivals. Okay, in March? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. that I know it's two days after that. So okay. The four, like, four. I get home, I leave on the 7th and get home like on the 12th. That's about all I know. Okay, okay. But well, that's going to be really fun. Well, anybody that's in Big Bear, come out to the cave. Is that what you call it? The cave. The cave uh, at the end of uh, this month of February. And see Pennywise, and then where are you in Ventura? The Majestic Theater. The, the Majestic the old, Theater, and that's going to be historic, on February uh, Giants 2nd Concert or Hall or in or March March second. March second in good old Ventura. Oh boy, that sounds really fun! All Another right, well, famous beach town. It's yes, town it is. Even. It yeah. is indeed. Well, thank you uh, for coming out today. Thank Byron. you for having me. I really me. enjoyed having you here. And uh, Pennywise is an awesome band, and we're going to. Uh, I wanted to. One thing I didn't ask you was like, I, I, and I know you've made twelve albums, which is insanely is that fabulous. How many? Wow. I think twelve, <laughs> uh, at least it's ten or twelve. And out of all those albums, what would you say would be one that you feel really like? Wow, this was this was like one that I really liked a lot of the songs. And I uh, well, I mean, so. you know, it's funny because I don't really listen to my own music, but um, there's Good a musicians lot. Do. Like. Um, <laughs> I mean, the first one was always great because, you know, we never thought we'd make one record, let alone right. however many more. But, um, uh, um, let's like, like, uh, I think Full Circle probably because circle. it was after the passing of our original bass player, Jason Matthew Thurst. And it was kind of like a, what do you call it? it was, yeah, but it's also like, um, I don't want to use the word venting, but like, kind of like, um, you know, like a healing record for us. Right, um, right, I understand. So it was like that. really powerful and emotional. And like, so when we listen to that back, it's probably one that actually, you know, stirs your emotions the most. Okay. Um, we don't really play many of the songs up back because it was, right. you know, kind of a rough period for us. But, um, but really listening to it, if I ever do, like that's the, the songs in that record actually get me going the most because, um, you know, it was such a such a moving and emotional right. and powerful record for us. Is, so. there a, uh, is there a live performance of that that maybe we could screen afterwards? Um, I know that we did. 
um, a couple of dates where I think we played that whole record in its entirety, so I don't know where you'd find it. I mean, if you probably YouTube, there's probably some, and it's called the, the Full Circle Tour. I know we right. we did it. Was um, there one song in I there think, that you, you would think? Where of? did we play? I mean, maybe we played it in um, Australia. I'm not sure. Okay. So, yeah, I, know I wouldn't want to pick, pick one song. I mean, they're all really okay, powerful. Okay, so you'll so. leave that to me. Yeah. Okay, yeah, well, we'll then I'm going to listen to the album, and I'm going to share with you uh, GW poppers out there that are viewing uh, our podcast. I'm going to share one of the songs off of Full Circle at the end, and you can see the great talent here that we have. And I thank you so much for no, thank you. today. It's really fun. Thank Come you on so out, much. guys. Come on out to GW Pop. It's going to be on May 18th, Saturday, May 18th. Hermosa Beach Pier. Hermosa Beach Pier, right on the beach. Come on, we want you to come get out. out here and support. It's going to be fun. We've got lots of good bands coming that day, too. If patience trying, when you tell me how to